shows you uh, the performance of different Gromax runs. It's always the same Gromax version. It's always the same input, always the same workload. It's always the same hardware as well. And the only thing that's different is the, uh, the way that Gromax was built for specific instruction sets. So that means if you're not running a binary that's properly built, you're losing about 70% of performance. Okay, the Easy Project, the European Environment for Scientific Software Installations, is um, a community project that sort of grew out of the Easy Build project, a tool, an open source software tool um, to install scientific software on HPC clusters. Um, the main goal of the Easy Project is to build a shared software stack of scientific software that is properly optimized for the system it will run on, um, and that works anywhere, whether it's in the cloud, on your HPC cluster, on your own workstation. Um, on any Linux distribution, essentially. Exactly. It, it's not really installing in some sense. We we call it streaming scientific software. So you see a catalog of software that we uh, we have included in the Easy repository. And as soon as you start using it, it just streams in, in the background. You don't really notice that things is going on in the background. That's a that's a really unusual concept. Right? You've yeah. got to admit, right? That's really weird. For for scientific software, it's, it's pretty strange, but it's similar to... Uh, to streaming services um, where you stream video or music. So uh, it feels very much the same as it does. This, this, bar, this bar plot shows you uh, the performance of different Gromax runs. It's always the same Gromax version. It's always the same input, always the same workload. It's always the same hardware as well. So it's an Intel Cascade Lake um, system. And the only thing that's different is the, uh, the way that Gromax was built, was compiled. So that means if you're not running a binary that's properly built to use AVX512 instructions, you're losing about 70% uh, of performance. That's a massive gap. That's that's a huge gap. Yes. Right. A, a lot of like a lot of folks, a lot of folks leave it to the operating system or they leave it to the hardware to just give them extra speed. You know, I bought a yep. newer laptop; it got faster. To some extent, this also applies to containers, where people build a container once and they want to run it anywhere. If you really want to run it anywhere on any hardware, you're on the left side of the graph. Um, it's a layered uh, layered structure in the project where we have a file system layer that is responsible for distributing the, the software stack. And this is the same high level overview again, but it, it shows that everything built here was done with open source software. So there's still VMFS for the file system. We're using Gentoo Linux to build that compatibility layer. Uh, on top, we're building the software with Easy Build. We're exposing that software with the LMOD environment modules tool. We're using that Archpack Tiny library to detect your CPU, and we're testing that whole software stack with new frame as well. Um, yeah, so we can we, we can show you that in action, right? So um, so what we're going to do is what I wanted to do is spin up um, an instance uh, on AWS. So uh, for fun, we said we take Amazon Linux, right? So the one that, that, uh, and the, the new image there. So the 2023 version there. So we'll take, uh, what is it? C6G.2. So we'll take eight CPUs. Um, I need my key pair to log in and that's enough. So this is a completely vanilla. We haven't done anything, right? It's the bare OS. Uh, it's already up. So now we want to install the stack. Um, so to do that, we, we're going to use the demo repository that we have for EC. So we can clone that repository. So we can try to clone it, but the image is so empty that it doesn't even have it doesn't even have Git yet, right? So we can do we can you know, install Git. I'm gonna clone that clone that repository. So we have examples for different types of applications. So Bioconductor, Gromax, OpenFoam, and TensorFlow. So they're all um, from pretty different domains. Mm. And they're also very hard to install from scratch, right? So this is still a like okay. we still are kind of in a pilot mode, but we're showing stuff that's really difficult um, to install. And so and, and so we have a couple of scripts then to uh, install. What you need is you need our distribution layer, so you need our file system, and that's C CVMFS. We can run that script. We can run the installation. Maybe it's worth point pointing out here that the only thing that we're really installing is the CERN VMFS file system, which gives us access to easy. We're not installing Gromax or TensorFlow or OpenFoam or any of this uh, package. Right. And so that's already done. So now we can see we have a new location on our file system, slash CVMFS, but there's nothing inside. Um, there actually is, but you can't see it yet. And if we do an LS, the it gets auto mounted and all of a sudden there's, oh, there's stuff there, ah. right? Um, you reach out and it's there. So now we can um, we can source from that location. So we have a to initialize the environment. We have a, an initialization script. 
we can take the latest version that we released and um, you don't have to and um, there are different versions available mm-hmm. um, that we have worked with but there's a pointer there just to the latest version so we'll use that for now so now some things have happened and um, we got a response from one of the tools we use to decide your architecture right so this says our spec says oh this is a gravel plan too and then because it knows now what architecture I have, it's going to use a particular directory um, to get pro- provide modules. So we use the, as kind of the user interface here, we're using environment modules. So we can, at this point now, we can do a module avail. Um, let's make it complete. So you can do a module avail and see all of the software that's available now on the system. So it looks like it's there already, but it's not there until we actually use it. And we can go, for example, to the Gromex example, yeah. yeah, and so now we can we can run um, that script. It's already doing the download, and, and that's it. Gromax is running already. So it feels almost instantaneous. That took like is- a second. I mean, you know, I guess really what I'm comparing to there is it takes about a second versus going and compiling Gromax and all of its dependencies from source, which can take a long time. So and when you're compiling Gromax yourself and you want to do it properly, so keep that bar plot in mind that we showed, you have to do a compilation specifically for Amazon Graviton 2. If you're switching to a Graviton 3, you should redo that that compilation and go through all that pain again. While right. here in Easy, you're getting all those those properly optimized builds straight out of the box. So that's that's the Gromax example run. We can have a look at that. So let's let's look at another example. We'll look at TensorFlow. All it's doing is loading the TensorFlow module and then just timing the running of that script. It took 10 seconds. Wow. Okay, so so even ten seconds is you know it's still it's incredibly efficient compared to again building this from source yourself. In my view, anything that makes scientists more more productive, you know, I've always thought the best kind of IT is the stuff is the IT that's invisible, um, because as it should be, right? You know, good good software should be invisible. It should should make the user just more productive straight away by by them using it, and they shouldn't have to learn too much stuff in order to get to the first step of being able to use it. So what you guys are doing is is impacting that a lot. Um, and I think the whole scientific community is going to appreciate it. If you're enjoying these videos, please give us a like and consider subscribing to the channel so that we can keep making more to help you understand how the cloud works and to show you new ways to help all the scientists and engineers around you who use HPC every day to do amazing things. It's what gets us motivated as well. See you next time. Oh,